first of all, what are the common challenges you're seeing within your role within businesses at the moment? I think this is going to be relevant to pretty much everyone within the room. I was thinking about this actually from a sort of there's, there's two sides to the challenges I think people are facing. And for context, I work with business owners on strategy, growth, business planning and that sort of side of things. Um, the two challenges are you've had some businesses do fantastically well actually uh, and sometimes we either forget about that or we don't want to talk about it because it feels like everyone's struggling actually I'm okay and so you know how do you rationalize that conversation but for some people it's if they're in the growth phase it's around how to recruit remotely how to onboard remotely um, how to kind of look at that business growth piece that culture change and, and that's certainly a challenge We've gone through the work from home, work remotely, you know, what's the kind of future of the office conversations uh, a lot. But typically they're the sort of, I'd say some of the growth challenges. But as for, okay, we've had a massive side swipe to many industries, you know, as of what, about a year ago now. Mm -hmm. um, hospitality, travel, tourism, so many um, businesses affected. That in reality, some of the challenges have been, OK, how do we even get remote? How do we set up with the IT um, because we've got a team and we're always in the office? Or how do I, as a business owner, as a freelancer, sole trader, et cetera, really change my business to being online because, you know, I make a physical product or it's service driven? Um, mm. I mean, you know, what do hairdressers do? There's, there's a real there is a real challenge. And I think. Those challenges that I've seen have been people taking stock and then saying, OK, how do I change? How do I go online or short term? Do I do something different? Do I do delivery driving because I can't do yoga or, you know, there's so many different um, different issues. And I think that's where I've seen a lot of the kind of resilience um, come in. Mm, that's good. Well. To hear. The, um, the announcement that comes on Monday will give a bit more clarity in terms of what business could, business could, this can expect sort of going into the rest of the year. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned there, Emma, sort of about this, about businesses changing. Um, what do you think about businesses sort of diversifying or changing their business model versus sort of sticking to what they've always done? And I think a lot of people within the room would have had to change their business model in some way. So, so what do you yeah. think about it? It's, there was sort of a narrative about we must diversify, we must pivot, um, you know, word of the word of the year really last year. But in reality, you always need to look at what your strategy is. Where do you need to be? What's changed? What can you control and what's out of your control? And what do your customers or clients know you for? And what do they actually buy from you? So there's been some people have gone quick panic, get everything online. I must run a course. I must sell PPE. I must do this. I must do that. And if you actually take stock and say, but I'm known for doing this one thing and one thing well, if I can still deliver it well, absolutely stick. You don't need to start adding in other things. It's worth thinking about how to diversify so you're resilient for the future, but you don't need to start going too scattered. Um, yet diversifying has done, you know, has helped people out a lot. Um, so think about the events industry. I mean, you know, you just network my club for a start. You know, you're suddenly not face to face. So what do we do online? How do we run awards online how do we create those experiences and start sending things out to people mm. um, there's been you know a lot of that sort of diversifying mm. did you see do you see that sort of continuing for the rest of the year then as we obviously return to some sort of normality do you think people will continue to do that and continue to pivot as you said yeah i think they will especially if you sort of think about i mean i don't know what Rishi soon is going to gift everyone on monday but it's probably um you know not an awful lot uh also thinking about when furlough ends and how that might impact um purchasing decisions and uh, and staffing we are going i don't think we're going to be back face to face for a long time um i don't think travel just chatting to a few people travel will pick up for sure but it won't yet and so people who are in travel are having to diversify and say okay i can't do anything at the moment here but what areas are open you know, where can we create those trips, experiences and so on? Um, so, yeah, I think it will carry on throughout the year because we just have to be we have to be flexible, I think, and sort of agile in in seeing where the opportunities are. Uh, I think that has taught us a lot actually over the last year. It's been a, a difficult learning curve for a lot of people, but still 
you know, bizarrely, it's actually been quite beneficial. Mm. No, I completely agree. Um, I think it's completely changed the way people work and maybe more people have been more creative, which can only be a good thing in their own businesses. Um, so if you give us sort of a few examples about how you've seen businesses become more resilient over the last nine, 12 months, you said we're almost approaching the year of COVID, I think. So yeah, can you give us a few examples of that? From um, sort of just taking stock perspective, I think businesses who've grown rapidly have unfortunately, um, you know, contracted and maybe had to, to lose staff, but it's meant that they are, they've built a much more solid foundation and said, right, what do we actually really truly need rather than quick, let's just hire all these people because we're growing. Um, so they're able to be more resilient when they grow next time because they now know what they actually need to, to kind of um, kick that business off again. But so to give you an example, um, a small shop, um, you know, renowned locally, but how do you start to um, kind of spread the word a bit more? And so brilliant customer service has really helped um, with resilience because hours have got longer. They were allowed to stay open doing many more deliveries, which has started to really create that swell of a broader customer base saying, you know, they were there, they were really helpful. Um, and so you start to get that loyalty. And then posting things out. So cake makers who aren't doing massive wedding cakes, but equally they can suddenly turn their hand to doing um, subscription boxes of cakes that can be posted. And the whole subscription box model has just, you know, exploded. Um, events to them being online and creating hampers. So you know, an events company that's suddenly gone, right, how do I make, do what I do brilliantly, but you know, share it with more people. And that is to work with fantastic local suppliers. Okay, how do we start to create that experience, those hampers, you know, the wine, the cheeses, the whatever it happens to be, send them out branded as, you know, this is from this company and also run an online, you know, wine tasting. And so there's loads of examples of where people are um, thinking creatively because you, you just have to. I mean, we know about the goat, right? The goat that, um, <laughs> okay, they probably like, you don't know about the goat. <laughs> Awkward, no, it's fine. Um, so there was a small farm. They used to have a petting zoo and, and do this sort of different farming type events. And they've now made, obviously that stopped. They've now made more than 50,000 pounds by um, renting out the goat on Zoom calls for like five, five quid at the pop. So it can come to your meetings, it can come to your birthday parties, you can choose your goat, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> and you just think, I mean, why on earth not? That's fantastic because the poor company of the farm, farm probably wouldn't have survived. Um, so yeah, people are suddenly turning their hand to things and they're kind of examples of, you know, some, some of the resilience examples um, mm. I can think of. No, that's really good. Um, we, we, we've just had a question come into the Q&A area, Emma, from Richard Hodson from UK Global. And he's asked, should we be looking at our post-COVID strategy? Uh, we'll be returning to normal in six to 12 months time. I suppose it's about sort of business planning. How, how do you go about that? Yeah, definitely. And Brexit was something that, you know, we don't like to talk about, but we have to talk about as well, um, especially from the import, export and, and everything. Definitely start thinking post-COVID. Uh, you know, we're sort of adapting to what normal is at the moment. It doesn't mean it's going to be like that forever. So I always think you need to have a sort of a, a two prong attack. You know, what if I could plan five years away, three years, two years as normal? Um, what does that look like? And then what does it look like? And it's phenomenally hard for people to project cash flow based on the last year. But what are those kind of projections if we carry on that midpoint to doing what we're doing now? And so you've got two options. You're not panicking thinking it didn't go the way I wanted. So you're you know, hoping for the best, planning for the worst. Um, and just definitely start looking out, outwards and upwards because things will change and there will be new opportunity. And um, yeah, definitely. Mm. I think, think six, 12 months ahead for sure. Yeah, sure, I think it's just sort of planning for different scenarios will put your mind at ease, I suppose, based on what happens. And I suppose the experience of doing this over the last six, nine, 12 months will only prepare people better. Yeah. Um, going back to the resilience part of the conversation as well, Emma, so what's your top tip for, uh, for resilience? Is that building within uh, your personal or your business life? Are the two linked? They are really linked, actually. And, you know, the experts on business resilience around IT and um, HR and systems and, and property and business continuity. But I focus uh, with people on much more of the personal resilience. 
because we are generally our own business and we run a business we might have kids we might be a carer we might be all sorts of different things um and you might even like to take some time out for yourself because everyone's so focused i think on, on business at the moment that you have to work on your own resilience you have to know what really feeds you and helps you build up your own personal resilience because if you can't if you're not uh, in a good place your business won't be mm. so the two are massively linked especially when business is or can be stressful um you know you need to i was sort of think you need to keep the tank topped up um it's like a fuel tank you know you don't know you, you need it topped up so you know you can drive anywhere um, mm. you don't want the red light coming on when you're about to go off on a a long journey so there's lots of ways of building personal resilience and um, mm. what, would, what would be your top tip for doing so i mean is, is it sort of around um planning i suppose and from my perspective i'm a massive habit person um so that's sort of having good habits and ensuring that I, I do certain things every day so is that sort of how you build up resilience in your personal life yeah there's sort of there's like a low level of always building resilience and then there's a needs must and they're quite different. So something that might work long term is things, things like meditation, yoga, um, you know, normal exercise. Whereas I need something right now. You need healthy coping strategies. It's not going out for a cigarette, I'm afraid. It's it's going out for a walk. It's having a run. Um, you know, I know someone that just loves to empty the dishwasher because it's just their five minutes away from the laptop and they can do something productive. It's not my husband, um, yeah. unfortunately. But everyone's got a different way of coping and it might be taking the dog for a walk or you know a half hour netflix people are crafting a lot people are doing things with their hands they're creating uh it's kind of let's step away from the laptop and do something else for 10 minutes and it has so many different cognitive benefits that that's kind of an immediate thing so i always encourage people to make a long list of all of the healthy coping strategies you can think of mm. and then pick your top two or top one that you know you always keep mm. um, that's that you know maybe i always go for a run or i always meditate or you know always bake a cake when i get stressed whatever it is that you've got something that you know you don't let go yeah i suppose it's about building that within into your routine as well with work and, yeah. and personal life as well yeah. um a question come in emma from from brad from brad our rmd who said what was the most commonly asked question from clients throughout january after the lockdown 3.0 announcement overwhelm so it's a lot about how do i get everything done and i think this lockdown hit people much harder um we're you know homeschooling again we thought we'd sort of come out the other side even though i think we knew it wasn't the case we had this view that it, it has to be fine and then suddenly it hit so how do i the, the biggest question is often how do i manage overwhelm um and how can i get prioritized, get things done. And also how can I look after my staff? I've got a, you know, an organization that's larger. Um, so it's very much that, the sort of the mental piece around it um, mm. as well. Cool. Um, and finally for me, what sort of, how can we prepare for any challenges that come up um, in 2021? I mean, hopefully this, the same thing is not gonna happen again and it's all gonna go back to normality. You mentioned travel earlier, everyone will wanna get away and get out every summer, it'd be lovely. but just in case something like this does happen again how can we best prepare for that i think we just need to acknowledge something will always happen um yeah. let's hope it's not this or locusts or anything you know epic something will always happen and actually as a business owner you need to also plan for sickness for holiday for the normal things and so you look at your business and say right have i diversified have i got different income streams am i am i safe am i robust and if not, I'm doing what I do brilliantly, but it's just me doing it. And so what's my um, strategy in case I'm off sick or I want to take that holiday when travel opens up? So to kind of just take stock of your business, um, look at what support networks you've got in place, look at your finances, get onto those numbers. Uh, even if you don't want to, you have to know what's happening under the bonnet. And then you can start to be uh, prepared. And I think you can face challenges when you're more prepared because we've learned so much that we can be agile in the last year. Um, a lot of people aren't running the business that they were a year ago mm. in the same way. And we've learned so much, whether we like it or not. So take those lessons, what's worked, what do we need in our business? And you know, how do we, um, how can we be more robust when something comes in next time? Because it will, whatever it happens to be. 
I suppose it's about controlling the controllables, which then we uh, we say a lot. Um, right, and Emma, last thing for me, I still have my last question, but one last question for me. What's your top tip for productivity and efficiency when working? I mean, I, one thing I've tried recently is sort of planning my week out day by day, but what's, yes. what, what's your top tip for productivity? To, you need to know what to prioritise. Um, and so doing that, I think you, you get it all out. I always tell people, put it on a mind map, you know, get it all out of your head. Um, so you can start to segment and go, right, what's the real priority? Because what's going to be the most strategic thing that drives me forward? If I do one thing today. Um, I love your thought of planning, you know, the days, always do your to-do list the day before. Mm. Um, that, that way nothing else gets in the way. Plan everything sort of the week before, but create space because life happens. Um, and we can't, especially online, run, at, you know, 100% all week. So just do the, the hard stuff first and build in time to just um, relax a bit more into, into your work. So there's not one tip, I'm afraid. That's a whole bunch. Very quickly. No, that's, that's, that's good. They're all good tips. Um, Emma, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. I'll be sharing a bit of information about your talk um, via social media and an email, which will go out later today. But thank you very much for joining us once again. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.